All right, uh, this is the first of the instructional videos for ArcGIS Desktop. I'm going to break this into a couple of different videos. The first one will deal with symbolization. The second one will deal with creating a layout. And the third one will be dealing with adding the elements to that layout. So let's get started. Remember from the introductory video that the thing we're going to be looking at first is symbolizing your data. We want to think about that. And so when we look at this, this is the sets of data that we have. We have a Pennsylvania and Ohio shapefile feature class uh, that is the boundaries of the states. Then we have the federal lands, which are within this. And then within these, we're interested in two different ways of thinking about this space. We have raster data sets that are the forest group and type. And then we have uh, some climate variables, temperature and precipitation. So first thing we want to do is get those symbols the way we want them to be and to say what we are interested in. Forest types and groups are nominal data. The climate variables are continuous ratio data in the case of the precipitation and then continuous interval data in terms of, te of temperature. Remember temperature unless it is um, essentially in Kelvin. We really don't see the zero value. Uh, and then, of course, we have the federal lands. Um, and we're going to look at those as ratio because we're going to be looking at their area. So let's just get started with that. What do we want to say? How do we want them to look? All right, so let me open up our Arc Map environment. And I've got this kind of the way you probably have it set up. Uh, I'm going to begin with my first data frame. And remember, by the way, we can collapse these. If yours is open like this, there's a plus and a minus sign next to each feature class. And if I click on that, it will compress it. In other words, hide the, uh, the legend, if you will. So first of all, I want to deal with the federal lands. And again, what I'm interested in with federal lands is I want to show them, but I want to show them by their area. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to Properties. And within the Properties, what I'm interested in is the symbology. Now, right now, you'll notice that this purple is a single symbol. And that would be fine if I just wanted to see their, their borders, and we're going to do that with the Pennsylvania and Ohio. But in this case, I want to see them as quantities. Now, I could see them as categories. I'm actually going to go through both of these. Imagine instead if I wanted to see them by their administrative characteristics. So if I click on administrative and add all values, you'll see Department of Defense, Forest Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, NASA, National Park Service, and Veterans Administration. And I could use that, and again, for any one of these, and I'll, we'll do this again, and I can click on this, and I can right-click, and I can edit this symbol, Properties for the Selected Symbol. I can click on it, and this is what comes up. And so if I wanted to, if I don't particularly like that color, Department of Defense as this kind of uh, you know, I might say, well, the Department of Defense should be a little bit more olive, I don't know, military. So I click on that. The Forest Service, I might, again, do the same thing. Right-click on it, and Properties for the Selected Symbol. Forest Service, I want it to be, for example, the fill color to be a nice green. And so, again, I can go through and change all of those. Uh, obviously, we don't want two of them being the same. Alternatively, I can simply click here on a color ramp, and there are a whole range of predefined color schemes. So I might go up here and say, well, I kind of like this one. And if I click on that, you'll notice that each one of these is now unique. Okay. In this case, though, what I really want to do is I want to look at quantities, and I want a graduated color based on the area in square miles. Okay, so now I've got area in square miles. Now, You'll notice that it defaults, in this case, to natural breaks. And that's fine. And in fact, it's probably the right system. But what I want you always to do is to look at this and click on Classify. Because what this is going to show you is where the breaks are and the histogram of the frequency of each of those values. And so you'll notice that and up here we have all of our statistics. The count, for example, we have 43 locations with a minimum of half a square mile, a maximum of 1,100 or 11,000 or 1,143. 
the mean is 67, the median is 4, and again, if we kind of scroll down, we get all our standard deviations about that. But we can see that it's fairly skewed, and so probably natural breaks is an appropriate way of doing this. And so I'm going to say, okay, five classes. Now again, by the way, if I wanted to, I could move any one of these classes simply by clicking on the line. I can also change this. Again, I can go back. I just By moving it, it defaults to manual. I can go back to my Jenks natural breaks, and it'll move this a little bit. Click OK. And you'll notice it is now a color ramp. The other thing here is that we have really way too many significant digits here. And so what I'm going to do is click on the label, and I'm going to format the label. And I'm going to say the number of decimal places I want to be 1. Okay, so one decimal place. Do I want to show thousand separators? Yeah, I kind of like them, so I'm going to click there. We might add a plus or minus sign, by the way, as well. I'm going to click OK. Now you'll notice my labels seem a lot more logical, and I'm going to click Apply. So now what we have is PAOH Federal Lands Gear Air Miles. Eh, it's not a terribly good title for it. So again, I can do one of two things. I can click on it again. You'll notice that I get a box there. And I can rename this. It's not going to change the actual file name. It's going to show, say, change how it appears. And I'm going to say Pennsylvania and Ohio Federal Lands. And then I'm going to click here, do the same thing. Area in square miles. So now my data looks the way I want it to look. Okay. You'll notice though that I've made this data so it is opaque. In other words, I can't see through it. When I go to this one, we're going to see how to change that. So now I'm going to click here. And again, I'm going to rename it to start. And this is pencil, pencil, Pennsylvania. Ohio. I'm going to click on it, and there's two ways that we can change things. You notice here, I right clicked on it and went to properties and symbology. That's one way of getting to it. The alternative is I can literally just click on it, and it will open up for a symbol the symbol selector. So I can go in here and say, you know what, I want it to have no color, hollow in other words. And I want my outline color to be red, and I want my outline width to be a little thicker. And I'm going to click OK. Now, I'm not sure that red is the best choice here, but for the moment, we're going to use that. And you'll notice that really pops out on the screen. It's not as good for printing as you would think. But again, I've got at least these couple of things in good order. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to change the order of how these things appear. And so I can do that by simply grabbing one and dragging it up. And so I want my forest groups and my forest types up at the top as an example. Or I might want these at the top. So again, I can order them simply by moving them back and forth. So once I've done that, the next thing I want to do is look at these forest groups and types. Now the first thing I'm going to do is expand them. And this is probably what yours looks like. And you'll notice there are a whole lot of black, uh, what we call patches, or then there's a few that are colored, and then there's a few more. And again, all of these. Well, we certainly don't want it to look like that. And there's an easy way of getting rid of that. You're going to right click again and go to its properties. And again, symbology. Well, right now, this is using what's called a color map. That is a predefined range that grabs the color code listed in each pixel. I don't really want to do that. I want to, in this case, use unique values. And you'll notice that what it does is it compresses all of those that had no value in terms of the attribute table, and we'll get to those later on, into one value. And now what I can do is simply go into this and remove that value. Now you'll notice that all I have are my different types of trees, but they're all black. That doesn't make much sense. So I'm going to go up here to Color Scheme, 
and select one. And since these are forest types, I'm going to use a little bit darker color scheme, something like this, and I will apply it. Now, the problem is, again, some of these are very close together. They're not quite the same, but they're close. And I'm going to click on Apply. You'll notice how some of these are very close. I'm going to pick one that's a little bit better, maybe. Not a graduated one, but let's try this one. Eh, that's not, a, not so bad. And again, I'm going to click Apply and OK. Now I'm going to turn this one off, and I'm going to turn this one on. And now you'll notice that the areas where there was no data, black, is now gone. It's transparent. And I might be able to go in this, if I expand it, I still have a whole lot of these available. And I might say, you know, what I'm really interested in is the eastern white pine. So I could go into that one and change it to something that really is going to stand out like red. And I might be able to, if I zoom in, I might be able to find those red areas. Oh, there's one right there. And so sometimes we can do that to make one of them stand out. All right, so let's turn this one off because I'll tell you what, that's got almost too much data for what we're interested in right now. But I'm going to turn that one off and I'm going to uh, compress it or close it, if you will. And now I'm going to move to my other one. Same issue. And here again, I'm going to right click properties. And again, in this case, I'm going to go to unique values. And I'm going to get rid of this first class, remove, and then re-symbolize this one. And I kind of like this one. And hit apply. And now I'm going to turn it on. Well, now this map is beginning to make a lot more sense to me. I certainly don't like that pink. I have to be honest. Pink's not a great color here, so I'm going to click on it and change that fill color to kind of a light Kind of yellow mustard. And again, I eh, don't like that one particularly either. We'll go back in there. And now, you know, I, I keep looking at it going, hmm, don't like that. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to go to more colors. And now I can do a couple of different things. You'll notice right now it's RGB. I can go to CMYK. I can go to HSV. Or I can click on its properties. Or I can click on any one of these colors, and I can actually kind of pick where I want to be here. I say, for example, I'm going to go kind of here, and a little bit here. Yeah, I kind of like that one, and I'm going to click OK, and hit OK. And so maybe I can make my color a little bit better that way. But I've, again, I've done the classification on these. I'm going to go down to my next data frame. Remember, this is the active data frame because it's bold. I'm down here in this one. I'm going to activate the data frame. And now I've got, and again, in our next lesson, I'm going to show you how to make these two look the same in terms of projections and coordinate systems. But since this is active, I've got to kind of do the same thing. So I've had these two here. Now, one thing that I can do to speed up the process, I've already made these two symbolize the way I want. And so the easiest way to get rid of them, I'm going to tell you why I'm looking at US counties here in a minute, is I can simply remove them. Go up here, remove that one. Go to this one, remove that one. And I can take both of these and copy them down. There's that one. It's going to use the same symbology. Here's this one. Same symbology, we're going to hit close on that. We talked about that in class. And so now I've already got them symbolized the way I have them up here. Okay, so we've added these two in. We've got part of this worked out. Now you notice we have Pennsylvania historical annual precipitation here. And to be honest, this kind of black and white doesn't look great to me. So what I want to do again, this raster data set, I can click on its properties and its symbology here is what we call stretched. And that means that what it's doing is taking from the minimum to the maximum, and it's kind of stretching out our color ramp across it. And there are, in fact, color ramps that are appropriate for things like temperature and precipitation. Precipitation tends to run from very blue to kind of orange or brown. So I can click on that, and this shows from the low to the high. 
I'm going to click on Apply to that. And you'll see that here is our precipitation data. Now, a couple of things, though, about raster data in terms of symbolization. I can do none. In other words, how is a stretch? It's not. And you'll notice that in this case, if there's no stretch, you're going to get a whole lot of data on one end and a few very, very high values. You'll notice 774 to 1862. I'm just going to click OK for a moment. I'm going to zoom way, way, way out. And what you're going to find is that in this data set, without a stretch, there is one or two values that are way up here. Some pixels that are right on the edge, and in fact, they're probably anomalies. And so if I come back in here and I change this stretch to maximum minimum and apply it, now the data looks a little bit more normal. I'm going to click on the histogram, and this is what you'll notice. You see this one way out here? These are what are really messing with our data. Otherwise, it's quite normal. And so what we want to do is some type of, if you will, normalization of our stretch. And again, in this case, what I would suggest is either a histogram equalized. And again, in an advanced class, we can talk a little bit more about this. Dr. Wong will talk about it. But in general, histogram equalized is a good option for this. Or okay, we can also do something like a minimum maximum. And you'll notice that each one of these kind of shows a little bit differently. It kind of depends on what you want it to do. But again, in all of these, we show our data, and we've now symbolized it. If we were to go, and I'm going to go into now, that was the precipitation for the annual. I'm going to go into one of these and just show you something that is a little bit of a difference about it. I'm going to click on Properties again. And again, I'm going to choose a similar color ramp. And you'll notice that I could classify it. And I can use that color ramp. Again, I'm going to scroll down to it. Here it is. And I can do the same thing because it is data that you is that sometimes our data is a little monkeyed up. And I shouldn't say monkeyed up in this case. It, it, there's, there may be a problem with this data set. And I want to show you why. When I open this up, and this is just a, the winter data, um, when I look at the histogram of this, and I'm going to click on classified, and I'm going to go into the classification, because we can classify raster data just like vector data. Notice what we have out here. There's, a, there's some data that's way out here, and then the vast majority of our data falls in here. So it's possible that these few values out here are anomalies. Now, it's possible that they are actually part of the data, too, and in which case we have natural breaks, and that might be appropriate because it allows us to have this very big class out here. An alternative to dealing with that is to enter an exclusion. And so let me show you what I mean by that. I think that any data above about 620 might just be outliers that we really don't want to see. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on exclusion, and I'm going to type in 622. 750, and you'll notice that would ex exclude all the way up to there. And I'm going to hit Apply and OK. And notice what it does. It moves this, and now if I said equal interval and apply that, and again, I have five classes here. I'm going to pick our nice colored scheme for water, something like that. Oops, that's not the one I want. I think I want this one. And by the way, you'll notice that it goes from the low values to the high values. I'm going to hit Apply and OK. And let me show you what that looks like. Now we have it kind of looking like a contour line. So we could classify this data. It's perfectly appropriate. I'm going to turn that one off. And so now what I want you to do is you're going to go through. You're going to classify. So here we have our annual temperature histogram and our annual precipitation. I'm going to turn that one on. Looks reasonable. For a temperature, same thing, properties. I'm going to look at it in terms of its histogram. Nice and normal, perfectly good reason to have this as either a percent clip or histogram equalize. And again, since it's temperature, we can imagine a temperature being from cold to warm. 
And so we might pick something like this and apply. And again, we get a reasonable annual temperature. Look at it. Yeah, that's okay. But again, I could classify this. Click on classified. And again, in this case, there's absolutely no reason to use a natural break. We're going to go to an equal interval. And in this case, I'm going to jump this up because it is temperature. And we have about 12 degrees Celsius of range. What I'm going to do is put in six classes and hit OK. And again, I'm going to put back in my temperature kind of classification scheme, which is kind of a, a warm to cool or cool to warm, if you will. And again, now you'll notice that I, want, I did this one on purpose because blue is at the high level, red's at the low level. I don't want it that way, so I can right click and flip my colors. And now I'm going to hit apply. And there we go. Again, classified raster data. Perfectly okay. All right, so that's it for our classification. Again, lots more that we could do with that. Talk about it in class.